Okay, we're going to do a brief review of how to solve linear equations. A linear equation is one where every term, that is things separated by a plus or minus sign from the rest, has degree at most one, meaning the exponent is at most one. So I could have an x or a y or a z or any other variable by itself, or I could have no variables in each term. So a basic linear equation will just have one variable, and we should be able to solve for it by essentially isolating that variable. Okay. So in this case, for instance, I'm going to subtract an x from both sides. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides, and I got a singular answer of x equals negative 4. Now that's not always what happens. So in this one, I will add 3 to both sides. I will subtract 10x from both sides. And I end up with the perplexing result of 0 equals 11. 0, of course, does not equal 11. This means the whole thing is nonsense. It means there is no solution. This is what we call a contradiction instead of an equation. Okay. Because... No matter what x you plug in, you'll never get it to work. Okay. It did not have to be 0 and 11, of course. It just has to be two numbers that aren't actually equal, claiming that they are equal. Okay. Let's do another one. All right. In order to solve this one, I'm first going to have to get rid of the parentheses by distributing. I will subtract 24 from both sides, subtract 12x from both sides, and I end up with 0 equals 0. Now you may think this looks an awful lot like the previous problem because, of course, x has disappeared. But it is very different from the previous problem because 0 does actually equal 0. So because I lost all the x's but got a true statement, in this case 0 equals 0, what this means is that everything is a solution. This is what we call an identity. Okay. With linear equations, these are your three possibilities. You either get no solutions, one solution, or everything is a solution. Okay. One other thing I want to bring up, and that is to make sure that we know how to deal with absolute values. So an absolute value of a number A written with vertical bars as so, is defined to be the distance from a to 0 on a number line. Now distance can never be negative because you have to be able to measure it. Okay. So this means that if a is negative, I'm still getting a positive absolute value because it's a distance. If a is positive, I'm getting a positive absolute value because a is because it's distance. In practice, what this means is ignore negative signs. But what you have to be very careful with is making sure to do this in the right order. Now, as far as absolute values are concerned, they are like parentheses in order of operations. So when I'm solving something like this, okay, because the x is inside the absolute values, my goal is to isolate the x, which I can only do by first isolating the absolute value. So, I'm going to start by subtracting 19, and then dividing by negative 2. Now, x minus 7's absolute value is positive 2. Okay, there are two ways this could happen. x minus 7 could equal 2, or x minus 7 could equal negative 2. Because both of those have absolute values of positive 2. Which means x equals 9 or x equals 5 as my potential answers.